Greetings from the Lone Star State of Texas, and uh, this is your Bible teacher, Pastor Chandler Freeman, and this is a note of hope. Today, our subject is the angry Queen Jezebel and the prophet Elijah. And so, the angry Queen Jezebel is a part of the series of angry people in the Bible. Our principal text today comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 through 8. Let us read a portion of scripture and then we will begin with a word of prayer. So 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning in verse 1. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. And then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Verse 3, then he was afraid, and he arose, and ran for his life, and came to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for knowledge, that your word will bring knowledge into our lives, and then we pray for understanding, that we will comprehend our minds will be able to understand the concepts, the lessons, the warnings, and the blessings that are in your word. Sanctify us, God, by your word. Your word is truth. And then we pray that we will apply your word to our lives. In Jesus' name, to give us the victory over anger, over depression, over suicide. We pray in the name of Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. And so the subject today is the angry queen Jezebel and the prophet Elijah. And so we see first, I want you to follow, the first thing we see in this pericope is Ahab's report to Jezebel. I find that very very interesting in this text that Ahab is reporting to Jezebel. You know, not Jezebel reporting to Ahab, but that Ahab is reporting to Jezebel. I found that very, very interesting in this pericope. But notice Ahab's report to Jezebel. The text tells us that Ahab told Jezebel all, notice that word, that's the key word in this text, all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. And this Ahab's report to his wife, the queen, Jezebel, in this text. Now, it's important for us to see Jezebel's reaction to the report that she had received from King Ahab and her husband. The text tells us, then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life, the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. And in terms of the reaction of Jezebel to the report that Ahab had given her concerning the prophets of Baal and Asherah, the first thing that Jezebel does is that Jezebel is angry. And Jezebel is not silent. Jezebel sent 
a message to Elijah. In this message, let's begin to dissect the content of the message that Jezebel had sent to the prophet Elijah. The first thing we see is that Jezebel swears by her gods in this message that she had sent. She says, may the gods do to me. And so she swears by her God. Isn't this interesting that women in the Bible weren't silent? Ahab reported to Jezebel and this is all we hear from him. Jezebel is in silent, but Jezebel is outspoken on the matter because she was a supporter and grand promoter of Baal worship in Israel. So Jezebel is not silent. She's angry. She swears by her gods. She is a follower of Baal and Asherah. And so she had sent a messenger to Elijah instead of the death squad. Isn't this fascinating? Because in most countries around the world, there wouldn't have been a messenger sent. The death squad would have been sent. She had sent a 24 hours death threat to the prophet Elijah. She didn't send the first messenger to kill the prophet Elijah, but to inform him. I think here we see from this approach of Jezebel, we do see how God works. We see the mercy of God in all of this. It's not that Jezebel is merciful. Jezebel is not merciful, but the approach, the approach she takes, in this approach we see how God is the grand weaver in human history. And so we see the mercy of God. Many have lost their lives around the world without even knowing that there was a death threat out for them. In this pericope, we see Jezebel's anger. We see how Jezebel is swearing by her gods. Also, we see Jezebel's vow to destroy Elijah in 24 hours. We see a messenger of Jezebel had been sent to Elijah to tell him that Jezebel was going to kill him in 24 hours. The death threats. Death threats are real. And we see this in this pericope. It's not an easy thing to be a prophet for God. And so the prophet of God now receives a death threat. I think it's important that when Many who want to be carry this title today as prophets of God should also be aware of the cost of being a prophet. And so we see first the anger of Jezebel. We see Jezebel vows to destroy Elijah in 24. She swears by her God she is committed to this cause, she sends a messenger and we see the death to that. Now this is the question. What did Elijah do when he heard the death threats from Jezebel? I think the first thing that the text tells us in, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 3. This is fascinating to me. It says, then he was afraid. And he arose and ran for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah. And he left his servant there. So what we see is that the way that uh, the prophet responds when he gets this death threat from Jezebel. The first thing that happens in terms of the mood of the prophet in this pericope. The prophet was afraid. 
he was afraid when he received uh, the death of that from Jezebel. Uh, bad news is very powerful. It's important to note. And this is a lesson uh, that we need to learn and learn quickly. That bad news is very powerful. Death news is very contagious. The prophet Elijah was afraid. He arose. He ran for his life. He went alone. The text tells us that he left his servant. He travels alone after receiving the death threat from Jezebel. Elijah came to Bathsheba. And Bathsheba is 80 miles south. He went into the wilderness. Elijah sat under the broom tree. And then Elijah prayed to the Lord. Now this is the prayer of Elijah after he ran, after he was afraid. The text tells us in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4, he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take my life, for I am no longer better than my father's. Isn't this interesting that Elijah prayed, I have had enough. And this is the digest from the prayer of the prophet Elijah. Elijah was afraid. Elijah was angry. Elijah was discouraged. Elijah was depressed. And Elijah was experiencing suicidal ideation. Afraid, angry, discouraged, depressed. And suicidal. It didn't stop there. He prayed for God to take his life. Now Elijah is not unique in this kind of a prayer. He's not the only man of God who prayed for God to take his life. In Jonah chapter 4, when God did not judge the Assyrians and God did not destroy the people of Nineveh, the prophet Jonah had prayed for God to take his life. And so we see the reaction of the prophet Elijah to the death threats of Queen Jezebel. He ran away. He became so discouraged. He became distressed. Now, why was he so distressed? He thought that what had occurred on Mount Camel would worth a national revival. And so the outcome that he had envisaged did not occur. What had happened was that he had received the message. And this was a death threat. I had said previously that bad news is very, very contagious in my exposition. Now, the text tells us that having prayed this man of God, the text said, and he lay down and he slept under a broom tree. Now, I do see here and this point is worth writing down in your journal and remembering for the rest of your life that sleep was an act of the mercy of God. And after Elijah had prayed, God gave him sleep because he had a discouraged mind and a distressed spirit. Now, sleep was an act of mercy, of the mercy of God. Elijah had enough and he was exhausted and he really needed sleep. Now it's important to note that sleep is good medicine. Sleep is natural medicine. Sleep is the best medicine. Sleep is God's medicine. Sleep heals the body and the mind and sleep improves the mood. Sleep will improve your mood. Let me repeat that concerning sleep. Sleep is good medicine, number one. Number two is natural medicine. Three is best medicine. 
is God's medicine because it heals the body and the mind and it improves your mood. His mood was discouraged, depressed, suicidal, angry, exhausted, tired, stressed. He had had enough. Isn't it fascinating? That the word of God says to us in Psalm 127 verse 2. It is in vain for you to rise up early and let take rest and eat the bread of toil. But he gives unto his beloved sleep. And so sleep happens to be a part of the mercy of God. That he can extend to us. That after we wake up. God restores our mind. Renews our mind. Replenish our body. And that our mood is better. No longer angry. No longer suicidal. No longer depressed. No longer fatigued. No longer stress. No longer pacing. And no longer fearful. It's important for us to understand how sleep is important. I need you to, to begin to take care of your body. This temple that God has given unto us. It's important for you to know that sleep is so important in this pericope. And so the first thing we see happening after the prayer is the prophet sleeping, an act of God. God, God allows him to experience his mercy where instead of staying up worrying and fearful and have not having a sound mind, God allows this man of God. He gives his beloved sleep. God gives his children sleep. The text tells us then an angel touched him and he was touched by an angel. We have two messengers in this pericope. We have a human messenger in this pericope and we have an angelic messenger in this pericope. The messenger from Jezebel was a human messenger, but that's not the only messenger in this text. The text tells us that Elijah was touched by an angel, that God had sent his messenger. Bad news came first through the messenger of Jezebel. But hold on, that's not the end of the story. We see good news coming from the messenger of God. And that's why the word angel means angelos, which means a messenger from God. One who brings to us the glad tidings of God. Jezebel had sent a messenger to threaten him, torture him. With her angry words. But the Lord had sent his message to assist him. And so we see that God's therapy for this traumatic situation, the situation that has taunted the man of God, God's therapy started with sleep. That's important. And so God sent an angel to touch him. When the, he got up, the angel spoke to the prophet Elijah and said, Arise and eat. Such a simple message. Not a deep message. Profound, yet simple, yet an ordinary message. But still a compelling message. That God cares about the little things in our lives. God cares about us sleeping. God cares about us eating. God cares about the things that we eat 
God cares about us keeping a routine that is healthy, that leads to abundant living, that leads to victorious living, that leads to living on purpose. And so we see that God's therapy started with sleep. God had sent an angel to touch him. Arise and eat. And all he needed was a hot meal and water. First Kings chapter 19, 6 reads, And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake, big on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate, and he lay down again. Isn't this fascinating? This is amazing. A hot meal and water. And so what he needed was more than a quick nap and a quick meal. Well, let me repeat that. He needed more than a quick nap. And I hear people say sometimes, Pastor, I just need a power nap. He needed more than a quick nap, a power nap, and a quick meal. Rest and replenishment is what he's needed. And so rest and replenishment is more than that quick power nap and a quick meal. The source of the meal was miraculous. The angel woke him up and told him, get up and eat. It was a big meal and not a quick meal. It was a big meal and not a microwave meal. The text says it was big. And so when you bake something, it takes time. The meal wasn't a rush meal, but the meal was a big meal. The meal was a healthy meal, big on hot stones. Isn't this fascinating? That the way how we cook today is totally different from what is happening in this pericope. It is big and stays hot on hot stones and cake in this text is a bread cake doesn't mean sugary bread like the bread we eat today but it was freshly baked Elijah drank water from a jar that means the water was cool by the jar now Elijah had had enough but what did he eat when he had had enough? After he sleeps, he wakes up. He didn't drink a soda. He didn't need an energy drink. I think this is very, very important. And I'm not trying to, in any way, bad mouth the energy drink uh, industry in no way. I'm just saying that energy drink for strength is different from getting real rest and replenishment. He didn't drink a soda or an energy drink. He needed a hot meal. Didn't have to be a fancy meal. He didn't need the most expensive meal. It was a regular meal. At this time, he's not staying at a five-star hotel. He was in the wilderness. The meal was delivered by an angel. It was not Uber Eats. It was not DoDatch. Angelic assistance proceeded the above. And will be there even when these services are unavailable. Isn't it important for us to understand how God meets the needs of his children? It happens through angelic interventions. The places where Uber Eats and DoorDash cannot reach, God still has the power to send his angels to meet the dying needs 
of his children. Touched by an angel, fooled by an angel, command by an angel, arise and eat. Then he lay down to rest again. The angel touched him the second time and told him to eat again. And that's all you need. You need to rest. You need to rest. You need a break from everything that's going on to get the rest that God gives. It's important to understand that God doesn't just give his children sleep, but that God gives his children rest. Rest from the troubled mind. Rest from what tears us within, from what breaks us from the inside. The crippling fear that God gives his children rest. The angel touched him the second time and told him to eat again because the journey that was ahead of him was great. Routine had been interrupted. Fear had come and fear had made this man of God forget about the journey that was ahead of him. Things can happen in our lives that can cause us to forget that God still has work for us. The prophet had come to a point in his life when he said, I have had enough. But even though he had come to a place where he had had enough, God was not done with him. And isn't it a wonderful thing that God doesn't answer all the prayers that we prayed to him. He had prayed for God to take his life. But the text tells us later on that this was a man of God that didn't die. Just like how God takes Enoch away, he's taken to heaven in a chariot of fire or a heavenly vehicle, transported from the earth into heaven, never died. Just like Enoch, translated, never died. And so God reminds him through this angel of the journey that was ahead of him. We need the rest because after the rest, then we can refocus on the great journey that God has for us. The rest and replenishment will give us the strength. We need to take the time to rest, take the time to get enough sleep, take the time to eat and time to really eat. Sometimes we're in such a hurry. We're ready to eat the way we ought to eat. But the journey is ahead. I need you to understand that your life still has purpose. Even after all that has happened. Never allow circumstances to make you forget about the journey. Food and water is necessary for the journey. Rest and replenishment is necessary for the journey. The journey in verse 8. He arose. He ate. He drank. And he went in the strength of that food. So the food was necessary. 40 days, 40 nights to her. The mountain of God. Now he's back to routine. I need you to understand that something called God's therapy. He's back on routine. He's no longer depressed. He's hopeful about the future. No longer in harm's way. God protects his children. God provides for his children. God comforts his children. This has been a note of hope with Pastor Chandler Freeman. We focus today on the anger of Jezebel and how it was detrimental to the prophet Elisha, almost causing him to abort the work that God has for him. But oh, at the end of verse 8, we see that God gives him the strength to focus on the journey. 
This broadcast is a listener supported broadcast. So I'm asking you to continue to support a note of hope. God bless you. You need to sleep, take the sleep. You need the strength is available. The Lord is the giver of strength. In need of a miracle, our God is still a miracle working God. In need of peace, the peace of God passeth all understanding. In need of provision, ask it shall be given, seek ye shall find, knock and the door will be opened. Our God still gives on common provision. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.